Team preview here. Dimitri going to be on top. Going to be running Cresselia, Heatran, Amoongus, Landorus, Kangaskhan, and Charizard. Trey is going to be running Conkelder, Heatran, Gengar, Kangaskhan, Cresselia, and Landorus. So definitely a lot of more popular Pokemon. We do see the double kit Mega with the Kangaskhan and the Charizard out on Dimitri's side. Mega's, of course, over on Trey's side. Hostiles with Gengar, Kangaskhan, of course. Gengar doesn't even have to do it. Well, that's not bad. Personally, I like the non mega Gengar better. Uh, you mentioned the double Mega. What jumped out to me on Dimitri's team is the double Fire. And the fact that uh, the, uh, on the other side, there is only the Heatran uh, with the great immunity to Fire, but no other resistances to Fire. And so if he's got two overheats and keeps firing off Sun Boosted overheats, it's going to put a lot of damage in the field very quickly. It's going to be tough for a uh, player to handle. Yeah, and that's sort of a chalk core. Yeah, that is a chalk core. Yeah. With Charizard over Thunderous. Uh, over on Treyas' side, you kind of had chalk right there. You have Cresselia, Kang is gone. You have um, everything but the Amoongus. Yeah, you have everything but the Amoongus, but you have Gengar instead, for probably a little bit of poison type to switch into fairies. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what Treyas' team can, can do right now. Um, well, the Heatrain is going to be very important for him. Uh, needs to, to keep those giant Sunburst and Fire Attacks from running through his team, because otherwise they will quickly. Uh, also, I'm, like in most games, the King is going to be important because it's the best way to put damage on those Pokemon quickly. Right, but Gengar is a Pokemon that King is kind of has trouble dealing with, because if it just sits there, all it really has access to to knock it out is going to be Sucker Punch. So, if Gengar just sits there and Willowist, that's a free burn for the King's Khan. So, we do see King's Khan and Gengar out for Shreyas' side, as we see the Charizard mode and Landorus out for, uh, out for Dimitri's side. So, Landorus is gonna go for Intimidate onto that King's Khan, gonna be a huge one right here. Gengar, of course, can still burn that Landorus, that's gonna be pretty big too. I mean, Landorus burn is not gonna do that much damage. No, uh, or it could Icy Wind the uh, Landorus slow it down so when the King's Khan put great damage on it. And so the Charizard sword in the King's Con also. Either is a great move for Gengar to use on turn one. Um, Gengar could also get knocked out on turn one very easily. He tries to do something like Icy Wind, like Willis, not pick up a KO, and just gets hit twice. And we do see Landers on Dimitri's side gonna switch out, gonna go into Cresselia, not something you see too often to switch Cresselia into a ghost type. Gengar, of course, does have a respectable special attack set. Kang's Con goes Mega Evolve here. Uh, by that HP investment, that Kang's Con's actually pretty bulky, it seems. So not ex not surprised to see that not do not too much damage, but also at the same time take a lot of hits. Charizard gonna protect. Not gonna try to take a fake out here. As Kangaskhan does go fake out into the Charizard slot, and Cresselia does avoid the Willows. That might uh, be problematic later on. Yeah, considering how much hit damage he's gonna get. Was, the Willows and Cresselia is not as useful as it would have been on the Landers, but it's still good damage. Uh, Cresselia is a very bulky Pokemon, so building up that turn by turn burn damage can be very useful. Eventually, only need maybe one return, one Shadow Ball to KO it instead of two. Yeah, um, I mean, Gengar can still have some offensive power here. Kangaskhan can hit Charizard, depending on how they are, but of course we see that Kangaskhan's a bit bulkier, well, probably I not going to ask that Charizard. I think there's great double-up target options here. A Sucker Punch plus Shadow Balls can be a KO on Charizard, and a return. You sure about that? I think so. I don't know, Charizard winning Mega Balls, it gets a pretty decent special attack, a uh, special defense boost. As we see, Heat Ran switching instead, so no double-ups right there. Uh, probably gonna reset that fake out for later on as Charizard gonna go ahead and Mega Ball here. Gonna bring the drought. Perfect to not Mega Ball last turn. Because now you get one more turn of Sun to operate in. Right, yeah. Uh, you want that drought as long as you can, so you're just gonna be protecting anyway. You might as well save until the next turn. Uh, heat Train comes in probably expecting an overheat. Ooh, the helping hand on that Charizard here. Gonna go for a Heat Wave. Okay, Gengar's gonna move first. Gonna go for the Shadow Ball. Targeting down that Cassell. Gonna do a decent amount of damage. Bring it all the way down to about 50%. As we see the Citrus Berry on that Cassell, you're gonna bring it back to about 75% here. Charizard gonna go Flamethrower into the Flash Fire. Good call right there from Treyas. Yeah, good switch in. Gets the great damage in Cresselia, reveals the Citrus. That means King is going to worry as much about attacking Cresselia, not worried about a possible Rocky Helmet, and so you could just go for a return that is borderline KO on, the, on that Cresselia. Uh, now he trans in with Flash Fire and Drought. Also, can probably pick up the KO on Cresselia, so Cresselia's not in a good spot. There's probably not much anything that can switch in. Uh, you know, we've seen the Landorus. Maybe if the Heat Train's in the back, it come in and take a big fire attack. Does this, does this, uh, is this Charizard gonna get knocked out? That's my better question. Like, uh, Sun Boosted, Flash Fire, Heat Wave, plus, plus a Shadow Ball? Maybe? No, I don't think so. 
You don't think so? No, I think, I think it would do a lot of damage to the Charizard, but I think it would be able to live through that turn and either put good damage on uh, Gengar or maybe have some kind of tech option to take uh, put damage on the Do you see the Shadow Ball connect with the, what was Cresselia? As Charles are now going to go flamethrower, Palms can activate Focus Sash on this Gengar here. Does activate Focus Sash. Is it going to get a burn though to pick up Knockout at the end of the turn? No. Here we're going to go Heat Wave now. Gonna target down the Charizard as it activates Heat Rain's Flash Fire on Dimitri's side. Does a good amount of damage. I think that Shadow Ball. Oh, that's crit, that's why. Yeah. Um, that critical hit probably does put it in Shadow Ball KO range now. So you're gonna put Charizard in a tough spot. We've seen now all four Pokemon on the other side of the field, and so nothing really wants to take that Shadow Ball. Uh, Landris is the best option, but it, unless it's Assault Vest, it's gonna take a really good shot. We're seeing how useful this kind of Focus Sash Gengar can be, where it's always causing problems. Uh, putting damage places, threatening support moves places, and you have to get it twice and with the speed and all the different things it can threaten that makes you be concerned so you have to switch out. It can take a long time to actually get to a hit some of Gengar. Yeah, and at that point, you know, you also have that other Pokemon next to Gengar you have to worry about, like this Heat Man right now. I will be surprised to see if this Heat Man, both Heat Rans are actually shooting very now, that's a very common item. As we see Shadow Ball connect with the Heat Man, uh, gonna go ahead and get a special defense drop here. As Charizard is gonna be content with picking the knockout on the Gengar. Trey is sacrificing that Gengar with the crit. Well, it's not gonna matter too much. I'm not sure it's an intentional sacrifice. Trey is probably predicting a Charizard attack, not wanting the easy uh, Shadow Ball outspeed KO. You gotta get the KO on Heatran, so it's a good trade either way, but probably hoping to see it protect from Charizard. Right, but now, you know, it's easy. Just go for a Heat Wave and then, you know, whatever. Trace decides to send him to probably pick up knockdown Charizard. Uh, once you lose Heatran on your side, you know, Heatran on the opposing side can easily just go wild. As we see Kane's caught here, probably gonna see Landers come in? No, gonna go for Cresselia on Dimitri's side. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised to see the Cresselia come in. Uh, Kangaskhan would be the expected Pokemon, and uh, you want to get the Intimidate on it quick. You also want that Earthquake to threaten Heatran now. Uh, Cresselia coming in is, you know, a Heat Wave and a Fake Out might be a KO. Uh, Charizard doesn't want to take a fake out either, so it needs to protect this turn. Opening like yourself, that totally opens Cresselia up for a KO. Really, really tough position for Kangaskhan right now. As we see, Charizard now going to connect with the Flamethrower, and now to beat that Kangaskhan. No fake out here, as Kangaskhan goes for the Power Punch, uh, probably expecting to switch into the Rolander slot here, but it doesn't really matter because Sucker Punch can easily now pick up the knockout on Charizard. Yeah, I think that's two turns in a row, Trace is predicted to protect on Charizard, and protect totally makes sense on Charizard, and so it's a great call by Dimitri to go for it. He's in a tough position sometimes when you're in a tough position like that, you just have to make a call. Oh, double target into the Kangaskhan. Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout here? Kangaskhan does get knocked out, so that's unfortunate right there for Shreyas. Yeah, I don't know if this rain could have picked up the KO on Cresselia, but Sun boosted, Flash Fire boosted, uh, Fire Attacks would have done a to it. He doesn't try to get the KO with either Pokemon, like Sub and a Power Punch, and ends up losing Kangaskhan for it. He does get the Sub, though. I think right now what Trace is most concerned about is this Cresselia and this Landers coming in, because I feel like he thinks that this Charizard doesn't have anything to target down his heat. Right, and so now that he trains in a really good spot. Uh, Landers is going to be able to hit it once, but if that one hit only breaks the sub, and if maybe even another hit only goes into the sugar tree, it's going to be really difficult to take down heat train before it gets all the heat train. As we see, Cresselia go helping hand here. Is this Landers going to be able to outspeed the Charizard and pick up the knockout? Charizard goes flamethrower. Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout? It is enough to pick up the knockout. And now it's going to be Heat Rain versus the world. Uh, Normally, when you say that it's a bad thing, but I think he's actually in a decent spot despite the 1v3. I still think he would have preferred to have enough Pokemon out there. Uh, Charizard does get knocked out here. Well, everybody would prefer to have another Pokemon out there. Well, yeah, but still, like. If Landers comes in, goes for an Earthquake, I don't think Heat Rain can... Well, I do think that, that, knockout. that Heat Wave miss is huge. So, if without the Heat Wave miss, Cresselia is at low health, not KO'd. The next Heat Wave, the next, the Earthquake breaks the sub, the Heat Wave can KO the Cresselia, and then on the next Earthquake, you're not KO'd because of your Sugar Berry. Now, that second uh, Earthquake would probably be helping hand boosted and get the KO. And so you can see that the ripples, that one miss, and just one good chunk of damage in Cresselia can cause. Yeah, and that Willow's miss from earlier. Uh, we will see Earthquake now connect with the Heat Rain here, gonna break that substitute. And what is gonna happen here? Is there gonna be something that Treyas has to knock up on the standards? Heat Rain now gonna go Heat Wave, not in the sun anymore. Flash Fire boosted still, but not enough to pick up the knockout of Landers as Priscilla goes for the Ice Beam here. Gonna hit it for a little bit of chip damage, 9 HP off the bat. And I think now we feel a uh, Helping Hand Earthquake coming in. Yeah, I think a Helping Hand Earthquake's a KO. Uh, you're right, it's two different misses that allow this Cresselia to be still on the field here and use that helping. As Landers now going to go Earthquake, 
gonna go ahead and activate the Shooter Berry. That should be enough to pick up the knockdown anyways, do that Shooter Berry. Helping him is such a useful move here, as it does pick up the knockdown if you win. And Dimitri, helping him getting the KO on Lander, is helping him getting the KO on Heatran. Really showing its worth in this game. Dimitri now picking up the knockout on that Heatran, as he is gonna move on to 2-0 here at the 2015-2016 San Jose Regional Championships. And, you know, we, we see that...